Hey, we are Ben and MP, and we've been rebuilding this big wooden boat for too long now. I think like two and a half years. We're now at the point where we're starting to put everything back together. And in this episode, we're gonna reuse our prop shaft, propeller, and all that stuff. It was twisted and bent, but that doesn't mean we have to throw it away. So we're gonna head over to a new friend of ours, Balion, who is a legend in the prop shaft propeller straightening industry. <laughs> I think you guys are gonna like this as much as I did, if not more. We're not gonna be away from the boat too long because we've got some more purple heart that we're gonna install to our interior and we know you guys like that. If you like our journey, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out a lot. And most of all, enjoy. We are today in a different location because I don't think you can recognize this because we're gonna work on something that's so important before the boat goes back to the water, which is our propeller and the shaft and finally move somewhere once we're in the water. So that's what we're gonna do today and I'm very, very excited. boat heels and it tips and it wobbles whatever you want to call it because of waves and also just the wind and you want the not only the walkways and the corridors to be as narrow as possible but still comfortable of course you want to be able to hold on to a bunch of stuff so in our case we're going to have lots of little rails going all around the furniture but one area that we really want to work on which is probably one of the most dangerous ones is the stairs going up and down. We don't have any handrails here, so we're gonna do a small test. And the first test we're gonna do is one handrail that's gonna come on top of this before you go up onto the stairs, just to hold on to here. We'll probably have another one up here as well. And when you're coming down, probably something to hold on to when you're going down. However, right now, this is the first one we're gonna do a test. We've done a lots of drawing and measuring and cutting and erasing on a piece of seven centimeter tall purple heart, which used to be 12, because we wanted a 12 centimeter high handrail. And then we said, no, that's too high for this seven. So I've saved you from all of the guessing and erasing. I'm gonna go straight to cutting, which is back where we used to work in the old days. It's been a while since we've been down here. While our shaft is getting some attention, the whole system is getting um, extra care. So we are now welding a piece that is a bit too wide because we want to make it cone shape for it to fit very nicely. So the welder is filling it in so later we can eat it on this cone shape. I hope that made sense. It's a very slow work because you need to do every little stripe side by side until the whole piece is filled in, but very cool to see. And yeah, everything is happening for our shaft to be the best way possible.
explaining me. He goes with the chalk, leaves it in the same position to see where it's missing, where it's twisted. And then after that, he put the twisted bit under so he can come with a jack, put pressure on it. And when he's slapping with that big brown spot, just when you're punching the iron, the molecules move. And that's how now you can see that bit that he was working on doesn't have a crooked movement anymore, it's just smooth. I'm so impressed, like I had no idea this was how this is gonna be made. Over here is the part we are making in a foam shape, so when we tighten this, there's no way it's gonna be loose anymore. Okay, farewell birds! news over here fam this piece is not loose at all fitting perfectly nothing that we need to do about this this is the telescope that's how we call it in portuguese it goes attached uh, to the bolt here is where the propeller will come yeah this one is good guys one less thing to worry about Okay. Leon was showing me how here, where the propeller goes, it is in this cone shape. Then so we're gonna copy on the other end as well. And here, this is fine. Propeller is fine. These are also good. So this is almost, almost done. We need to finish the other two. Just show back up here at the prop shaft or propeller or the lathe area. Today the job is, remember this inside got welded with lots and lots of sticks. Today it's gonna to be turned into the cone shape to fit on this bit of the prop shaft. And it's really cool because we have a big schooner and I think that our prop shaft is big compared to lots of other boats. However, you come here, that's ours. And then you come here, and you can see that ours is definitely tiny. I'm gonna do my best explaining what's gonna happen now. He's right now choosing the angle he wants to turn the inside of the flange because the inside is gonna mount on top of this. And as you can remember, it was, this was turned at a little cone shape. So this angle that he's adding right now there is the kind of cone shape we want to get out of the flange.
Stadion was just telling me the amazing story of him and this machine. So this machine is from 86 and he was the only person to ever work with it. And how come? He used to work on a company, on this machine, the machine came new to the company and he was operating it for 20 years. Unfortunately, that company went bankrupt. He managed to negotiate with the company to give him this machine that he worked 20 years for. So then he got the machine and ended up opened this business, which is his own business, and he's been here for 18 years doing that. How incredible is that? So happy how the handrail turned out. We've managed to round this edge a bit. We're gonna chuck the router around it. And it's really nice that it's raining actually. Not actually, but anyway, it's nice that I don't have to do anything else up on the boat and I can stay in here and film exactly what's happening inside the boat. So it's been a while that I've had a day of just filming, but for you guys, it might be pretty cool. So small things that we usually don't show you. The handrail is something we definitely would have. However, I don't know if you've noticed how ugly all this is and all here. So what we're gonna do now, we've got this thin piece of uh, Brazilian ash and that's just gonna cover it all. And while we were at it, we just gave a go sanding this uh, kind of table-y thing. And look at the grain of this wood. Anyway, next steps are cutting this in the right shape, placing it all along here, all the way around make it look nice. This one's in place, you can see how nice it is. Of course, that's cedar, that's ash. This, maybe Angelique, I don't know. But uh, this has to be varnished and it'll look really nice. Look at the jig we've got on this one over here. Because the beam, this beam is arched and it's not straight. We've got a clamp on one side and a clamp on the other side holding it in. And it'll be some plywood holding that down. And then we've got these two wedges over here, three wedges now creating the curve. So we're gonna apply a bunch of epoxy resin underneath it, and then we're gonna arch it and keep all this in place until it's nice and dry, and then we can sand it down so it looks nice. There we go, and that is what epoxying looks like. And this is an exceptionally clean job. First one is looking super nice. Hopefully the second one is also gonna look super nice. It does look like a mess right now. However, this is very strategically placed. So all of it's being held in place with a bunch of epoxy resin and cabasil and the ash wood sawdust. So this should be fine once we remove it. Uh, I've taken off all the blue tape already where I could because once the epoxy sets, or cures, it really is impossible to remove. The only blue tape left is the blue tape under the wedges, which is good because I don't want the wedges to be glued to the wood either. Uh, another thing that's been going on, wow, that was going on. This area here, I don't know if you remember a very long time ago, we had these four planks replaced as water was coming in here and rotting. Nico has gone over with some fairing compound. We're gonna sand all of this flat and make it look really nice to have our like our chart plotter on and stuff like that. Maybe have a lid, a nav table, little things that you can lift. 
but yeah, for now, let that dry. Let this dry, it's all very wet right now and sticky. Now that the flange is in the exact shape we want, the cone, it's time to go back to the prop shaft to adjust this cone shape a bit so that the flange fits perfectly on it so there's no wobble and it's completely sealed as well. This is all dried up, which is nice. We're gonna just take these mounts off. And also it's nice, because yesterday, I, they were all just on top of the stairs and I'm quite tall here. And uh, I left a small hole in the top of my head, so I'm very happy these are off. All that's gonna be done now is it's gonna be sanded down uh, and maybe filled to make it as smooth as possible. However, that's already done. They look super nice. What I have noticed is now that we've fed this top and we're about to paint it and stuff like that, it is raised over here, but here we've had to remove the bit that was raised to access some parts of the wiring. So we're probably gonna start working on a little wall here now. It has the little ledges for plywood to come in here. I don't know if you can see that. I think it would be nice to still have a nav station, or a nav table, sorry. Uh, also on top of this is where the compass comes, the plotter, the bilge pump switches, but they don't have to be. So we're not sure yet if we're gonna keep this here or if we're going to raise it because there are holes here so if you raise it you can see the line where it used to be it used to be a big lid of plywood which is very impractical because all the stuff just slid all the way to the front but we might have little compartments just lots of little compartments that we can open from all different directions like one here for example this one will be closed because like i said the compass one over here and one that you can maybe access from the stairs or something so that would be very cool Before we do move over to the bit up there, I remembered we had one more handrail lying around which is going to be installed now, which should be pretty cool. Now that this handrail is up, it's been started to varnish, it's been sanded by Nico very nicely. I'm gonna tape it off because we're using two different varnishes on the redwood and the purple hut. Nico's up there doing some last final touches. Well, we are gonna turn the area where we store our clamps into a very nice area with a gimbal and a air fryer and a stove. Those if you are. And confere here. Agora vem cá. Do, do, aí tu vai aqui, ó. 12 fios, ó. Tá aqui, ó. Aí. 3. Uh -huh. G. Aí tá no G, aí tá no N. Now we need to make the thread of the prop shaft match the nut that's gonna go on it. The first tool he used was to measure the thread and we realized it was a 12 thread bar. And over here there's the whole table of everything. So we went for the 12 thread. I've lost it already. Here. 12 thread and then you got B N E G 3 so what happens is it goes on B N E G 
and in a gear three. And now what should happen is when he turns it on with the lead bit over there is it's gonna make ex copy the exact thread because of course it has to be in a certain depth and go across a certain speed for the thread to stay exactly the same. He is the lathe master and I'm super glad that he's willing to explain all this to me because I'm fascinated. One day I might want one of these and work on it myself. Figure out all those numbers first. So the prop shaft is all ready, except for that little catch. Probably got a better name. That starts to be made. So the next step, uh, the flange is also ready. The nut's ready. He wants to weld a little washer onto it so it sits nicely into place. The next step is the tunnel. If that's what the name is, I still don't know. But I think it's called the tunnel. And the propeller is down there. We don't know if we want to, we probably want to use this propeller, but I want to have a look at the pitch because I know that can really help efficiency and speed while sailing. So that is there for now, ready to use, but I would like to look. Just so you know how close we are, that's his office over there. And the shipyard is where that red building is. Our prop shaft system is not completely ready yet because we still need to make the tunnel and then after that we can bring everything to the boat and install it so our engine, so our propeller can turn and the boat can move throughout the sea when we're in the water, eventually. <laughs> Before saying bye, we would like to welcome John and Ken for joining us on Patreon. We really hope you enjoy all the extra content you get there. For example, the alternator installation. And thank you so much, Brenda and Greg, for your PayPal donations. And thanks for leaving us a super thanks. Michael, Joel, Dwayne, Adrian, Joseph, Veteran Mike, Jens, Lori, Wiley, and David. See you guys all next week, and thank you so much for supporting us and watching our episode.